hi gang, and my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. You know, the National Weather Service has over 100 different products, different types of alerts they can issue, including advisories, watches, and warnings. Most advisories will be phased out by 2024. We're used to some, like the severe thunderstorm watch or the tornado warning, but others are a lot less common. Here are 10 weather alerts you probably have never even heard of. Number 10, the Volcanic Ash Fall Advisory. They're issued mainly for aviation since ash can actually melt and accrete on aircraft turbines. That can pose a grave danger for flights, especially since ash is too fine to be seen on most commercial aircraft radars. There are nine volcanic ash monitoring centers across the world, two of which are located in the United States. One is centered in Washington, D.C., and the other in Alaska. The former oversees much of North and Central America, while the latter is in charge of most of the Pacific. Number nine, an air stagnation advisory. When the air sits in place too long, pollutants can really accumulate and degrade air quality. We don't want that. A bit of wind is actually a good thing. Air stagnation advisories are issued when an air mass is expected to fester and linger and languish. This is especially common if an inversion forms or a warm layer a few thousand feet above the ground where air temperature actually increases with height. Here's an example of a very shallow inversion I found in Fairbanks, Alaska. It caps off air from rising and even helps to keep fog near the surface. It smelled like diesel fuel and car exhaust at the time. Here's another example I captured in March of 2020 when toxic nitrous dioxide gas built up near the ground in DC thanks to a strong inversion. You can kind of see that weird browner shade over the capital. Here's yet another example from Chile in 2019. Number eight, the blowing dust advisory. Now odds are, you've probably heard of a dust storm warning before. A blowing dust advisory is a step below that. Blowing dust advisories are issued when visibilities are expected to dip below a mile, but should stay above a quarter mile. Full blown dust storms can induce brownouts, similar to whiteouts and blizzards. Driving can become extremely dangerous, especially in full significant dust storms. Here's a classic example from January 15th, depicting strong gradient winds on the backside of a cinnamon bun swirl of low pressure that kicked up enough dust in the high plains of Colorado, New Mexico, and the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles to actually prompt a special bulletin from the Aviation Weather Center. Number seven, the avalanche warning. The Weather Service transmits watches and warnings when avalanche conditions appear possible. The Weather Service doesn't issue them themselves though. State agencies like the Colorado Avalanche Information Center do. There's also a Northwest Weather and Avalanche Center in Seattle. Like the Colorado Center, it's collocated with the local National Weather Service office. Number six, the extreme wind warning. You never really want to be beneath one of these. It means extreme winds of 115 miles per hour or greater are about to accompany the eyewall of a landfalling major hurricane. That's category three plus. These warnings were actually born creatively and out of necessity. In 2004, meteorologists in Florida issued tornado warnings for the extreme winds associated with the eyewalls of Charlie and Jean as they made landfall. 11 such warnings were also issued for areas in southeast Louisiana, including New Orleans, during the passage of Major Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Nowadays, the National Weather Service can deploy the newly minted Extreme Wind Warning. The first was issued in 2016 during Hurricane Matthew near Titusville, Florida. I've been under an Extreme Wind Warning multiple times before. Number five, the low water advisory. This one's sort of basic. It's much less dire, but it's still useful. It basically just tells mariners that there's not as much water in a place as there normally should be. It's important as they plot their routes carefully and navigate with caution. Number four, the heavy freezing spray warning. This one is also for mariners. It's commonly issued in the winter time. Salt water freezes around 28 degrees, but it can take a long time. The seas also have a tough time freezing if they're all churned up. It takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water due to its high specific heat capacity. When the air is super cold, any water that gets kicked up by wind and wave action can freeze on contact with solid objects. If you've seen Deadliest Catch, you know how problematic this ice buildup on ships can be. Number three, the radiological hazard warning. This one is as scary as it sounds. To be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if one has ever been transmitted by the National Weather Service, but they say it's a quote, warning of the loss, discovery, or release of a radiological hazard. So yeah, I have a weather alert bucket list and that one is definitely not on it. Number two, the typhoon warning. Now, the National Hurricane Center oversees and issues tropical products for the lower 48, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The Central Pacific Hurricane Center handles Hawaii, but neither agency forecasts for Guam or the Northern Mariana Islands. Instead, in Guam, meteorologists at the local National Weather Service office there work with the Japanese Meteorological Agency and a U.S. Navy organization for their forecasts. 
Because Guam is about 1,500 miles east of the Philippines and still west of the international date line, hurricanes there are called typhoons. Thus, they get typhoon warnings. And number one for the craziest weather alert, the fire tornado warning. Technically, it's not its own product, but it has been issued before. This was an unprecedented alert issued by the National Weather Service in Reno, Nevada back on August 15, 2020 during the Loyalton fire. Meteorologists issued that tornado warning for Lassen County, California after detecting strong rotation in a smoke plume commensurate with a fire tornado. These weren't fire worlds that spin up from the ground. These were bona fide tornado scale vortices made of smoke and fire that reached down from the clouds above. The smoke plume from that fire reached about 40,000 feet, more than tall enough that it felt a change of wind speed and or direction with height in the atmosphere, aka wind shear. That caused the plume to rotate and eventually produce a bona fide legitimate fire tornado. Tornado. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.